Can I use this one? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So um, I'm going to talk about GCM. Uh, Galois counter mode is an authenticated encryption mode of 128-bit block ciphers designed by McCrew and Vega in 2004. It was selected as the NIST recommended authenticated encryption mode in 2007, and it is widely used in practice. So this is an overview of the encryption algorithm of GCM. So it takes a block cipher key K, a nonce N, associated data, A, and a plain text M as inputs, and outputs a cipher text C and a tag T. It uses a block cipher, EK, whose block size is N bits, which is 128. So we first compute the initial counter value for this counter mode, which is and concatenated with constant when the nonce length is 96 bits. Otherwise, we, can, we use this g hash function to obtain this initial counter value. Where this g hash function is a universal hash function, and L is a key, which is the encryption of zero bits, and this epsilon is an empty string. And then we use this counter mode to uh, generate this uh, key stream, which is extrude with the plain text to obtain the cipher text. Then we compute the G hash value for this A and C and take the X of these two values to obtain the tag. So the designers proved the security of GCM. They analyzed privacy and authenticity against chosen cipher text attacks and this is their privacy bound. And this roughly says that ciphertexts of GCM are indistinguishable from random strings. And this is their authenticity bound. And this roughly says that GCM is unforgeable. There have been several attacks. Ferguson showed that fraudulent attacks are possible when the tag is short, and Drew showed key recovery attacks on DCM by reusing a nonce, and showed forgery attacks on the draft NIST version of DCM. Hanshu and Perignon pointed out there is a weak key DC in DCM, and Sarinen pointed out that there are many weak keys in DCM. Still, it is widely considered that the provable security results of GCM are sound, in the sense that these attacks do not contradict the claimed security bounds and that no flaw in the flows has been identified. So some of these attacks show the tightness of the security bounds, and others are outside the security model. For instance, a nonce is reused. Now I'd like to consider an equation over GF228 defined by the, this irreducible polynomial, which is the one used in DCM. The multiplicative and the identity element is eight followed by zero bits, and this is the equation. U L squared X Y V L X Y one equals U prime L squared X Y V L, where U, U prime and V are these sparse constants where we see two here, six here, and four eight here. And I'm interested in the number of solutions in this equation. And this is very easy to see that this equation has at most two solutions because the degree of this polynomial is two. Now I'd like to introduce an increment function used in DCM. So it takes a one twenty eight bit string, where X is 96 bits and Y is 32 bits. And the most significant 96 bits are not changed, and we increment the least significant 32 bits by one modulo two to the 32. 
So for example, the increment of one is two, and I replace this XOR by one by this increment function, and ask the same question. And I'd like to note that the left-hand side may not be a degree two polynomial over GF to the one twenty-eight, and this is not as simple as the previous one, but we can verify that these are the solutions. And there are 32 solutions. Now I'd like to explain why this observation is relevant. So in analyzing the security of GCN, we have to consider a counter collision. So suppose that we have two nonces, N and N prime, which are not 96 bits, then we use this G hash to obtain the initial counter values. And these strings are XORed with a plain text to obtain a cipher text. And these strings are XORed with another plain text to obtain a cipher text. And the counter collision is a bad event. So for example, if we, if we have a collision between I1 and I prime one, then the XOR of two cipher texts is identical to the X of two plain texts. So if this happens, the information about plain texts is leaked. So we need to show that the probability of a counter collision, call L, R, N, and N prime is small. And this is the event that the R times applications of inc increment function on g hash of n is equal to g hash of n prime. So I'd like to uh, explain the details of g hash. It's a universal hash function. And we first pad with zero bits so that it becomes a multiple of n bits. Then we concatenate an n bit representation of the length of n. And we break it into blocks. And the G hash value is the result of evaluation of this uh, polynomial. So for instance, if N is this one, which is 72 bits, then it is parted with zero bits and multiplied with n squared. X of 48 times L, where 48 is 72 in hex. So this is L, U, L squared, X or V, L that we have uh, seen before. Similarly, if N prime is this value, then the hash value of N prime is U prime L squared, X or V, L. So as I mentioned, we have to show that the probability of a counter collision is small. And there is a lemma in the original paper saying that the probability of the counter collision is at, is at most the maximum of d and d prime divided by two to the n, where d is the degree of g hash of n, and d prime is the degree of g hash of n prime. And it covers a general case, but this, if we substitute parameters, then the lemma says that this equation has at most two solutions. But we have seen that this equation has 32 solutions, so this lemma is not correct. And this is an important lemma that is used in both the privacy proof and the authenticity proof. And both proofs contain a flaw. I'd like to introduce you one more observation regarding this counter example. We have seen this equation A has 32 solutions. And if we increment one more time, once more, then this B has 31 solutions. If we increment twice more, then this C has 30 solutions. And if we don't increment, then it has one solution. And these 94 solutions are all distinct, meaning that the probability of the event A or B or C or D is at least 94 divided by 2 to the 128.
and this observation can be translated into a distinguishing attack on GCM runs n, which is GCM where we use a random function instead of the block cipher. By simply observing if the event uh, implied by the event in the previous slide occurs in cipher texts. And we can show that the privacy advantage is 90, at least 94 divided by 2 to the 128. And this attack does not contradict the overall privacy bound, but it invalidates a part of it. So this is the original security bound. And the second term corresponds to the advantage, the privacy advantage of DCM rand n. And if we substitute parameters, then it says that this advantage is at most 80 over 2 to the 128. So I have several remarks. Uh, the attack does not break DCM because our attack does not contradict the overall privacy bound and it invalidates only a part of it. And I also would like to uh, remark that the attack also invalidates a part of the authenticity proof. The success probability of the attack is small, so the attack practical implication is limited. And the attack does not work if the nonce length is restricted to 96 bits. And this is actually required or recommended by many standards. Now I'd like to uh, see if we can repair the proofs without modifying the original specification. And for this, we have to derive the upper bound on the probability of a counter collision. And for this, I will introduce a combinatorial problem. Then I will discuss the relation to the proofs and approaches to solve the problem. And finally, I will present our new privacy and authenticity bounds. So this is the problem. So let this YL be a set of Y plus R modulo to the 32 X or Y, where Y is in the set of 32-bit strings. And we set alpha r to be the uh, cardinality of yr. And the problem is to determine alpha max, which is the maximum value of alpha r, where r is between 0 and 2 to the 32 minus 1. So we have y value here, and y plus r modulo to the 32 here, and we are interested in the extra difference of these two values. And this alpha r is the maximum, num is the, alpha r is the number of possible non-zero extra differences of these two values when y ranges over the set of 32-bit strings. Now I would like to uh, recall that a collision, a counter collision is this event. And if we can replace this left hand side by d hash of n x was c for some constant c, then we can derive the upper bound on the probability because this one becomes this one. And this is a polynomial over gf to the dn. But this constant c depends on the values of r and g hash. And if we think of this y as the least significant 32 bits of this g hash of n, then this alpha r represents the number of possibilities of c. And for each c, we know the number of solutions for this equation. So to use a new version of lemma 3, we can show that the lemma, which says that for each r, the probability is at most alpha r times the maximum degree divided by two to the n. And if we can derive the maximum value, alpha max, then for any r, the probability is at most alpha max times the maximum degree divided by two to the n. 
So there are several possible approaches to solve the problem. And one example is to make use of tools for the analysis of functions called S functions, developed by Moha and others, and by Logan. So there are approaches, and our solution is to show a recursive formula to compute the value of alpha r. So in the paper, we have shown this uh, recursive formula, and I will not explain the details, but this result can be used to efficiently compute alpha r. And based on this result, we can draw a graph showing the relation between R and alpha R. And we see that the maximum value is slightly less than 2 to the 22. And the actual value is about 3.5 million. And the equality is achieved when R is one of these four values. And this is our new version of lemma three. For any R, the probability of a counter collision is most to the 22 times the maximum degree divided by two to the n. And we can use this result to obtain this new privacy theorem. And this is essentially the same as the original privacy bound. Uh, but we are dealing with chosen plain text attacks instead of chosen surface text attacks. And uh, the main difference is that we have this 2 to the 22 here. And we also have shown that if the nonce length is restricted to 96 bits, then DCM has a stronger security band. This is our new authenticity theorem. And this is, again, essentially the same as the original authenticity bound. And the main difference is that we have this constant here. And again, if the nonce length is restricted to 96 bits, then we have this uh, stronger security bound. And to conclude, uh, we have shown that lemma three is not correct, and the probability of a counter collision is higher than claimed. We showed that proofs can be repaired. We presented a new version of lemma three, a new privacy theorem, and a new authenticity theorem. Our bounds are worse than the original bounds, but DCM maintains the provable security. And we have also shown that it has better bounds if the nonce length is restricted to 96 bits. And the open question is whether we can improve our security bounds. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? <laughs>